Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, it's good to be back. We took a few days off, and, and you know what? You take a few days off to rest, but then you need like a little vacation after your vacation, right? Has that happened to you? But this time I said, you know, I'm going to be smart. I'm not going to be like doing like, because I usually, uh, when we take a few days off, we have like a plan. Like, you know, we know when you go with an agenda, and the agenda is to rest, but you start your day at 7 a.m. Well, I changed my agenda. And it was wonderful because I think there was a day that I said, you know, I'm waking up at noon. And I felt so refreshed, and I felt that God was downloading so many things that he is already doing. We are in a new year. But while I was resting and vacationing, right, and it was at a staycation, so uh, those are always fun. But as I was thinking about God, thinking about the new year, thinking about Elevate, praying for what he has this year, thanking God because I have to, and you have to have a heart of gratitude, right? We have to be grateful to God. And I know that every year, 16, in 2016, 17, 18, we always say like, oh, the last year was hard. And it's always going to be difficult. It's always going to be hard. But we're with God. And so he makes it possible for us to, hey, it's another year. It's another day. And as, of, as we were worshiping, I told the Lord, like, this is the moment um, that we get to worship you. Sometimes we think uh, that we, the moment of faith is, faith is for today, of course, but faith starts now, like right now. Like if you didn't start your day good, it's okay. Do you know that it's okay? You know that God forgives you? Do you know that he gives you grace and say, well, this is your moment that you and I can get it right. So I was talking to God and I'm like, God, you are such a God of, God, I I can't even describe what I felt, like how much he wants for us to receive this year. But I felt that we are so still loaded up with all of these things that happened to us last year that we don't want to release it. We are in fear. We don't want to move forward. And God wants you to move forward. God wants you to live life. And I'm speaking to myself like live life. Be in the present. Be in faith. So my new title for, I'm going to do a series for the first time, 2019, since I started. Wow, woo three, three, three Wednesdays, finally. And I wanted to call it, well, I'm going to call it Swap. And I'm going to call it Swap because of this. When my, ki- when my kids were little, we used to have, well, I, I didn't, I, I'm a dog lover. Who, who is an animal lover? Like, I am, like, I'm a sucker for them. You know, like, I, I, I just love them. Like, they're my kids, and I ha- now I have grandkids because Isaac has dogs, right? <laughs> so, and I treat them as grandkids. I play with them, but I don't take care of them. I have a son, a Rottweiler, that's different. But when they were growing up, uh, they liked the idea of having pets, right? You know your kids, when they're little, we want a pet. Alexis was one. I'm just going to throw her under the bus. She wanted, in a good bus. We're not like, the, the wolves and the bus go around. Th- that kind of bus. But she's like, Mama, I need a pet. And, and what do you want, baby? I want a dog. And, and I knew she wasn't, a, you know, a pet person. You know why? Because remember those virtual pets? Back in the 90s, if you don't know, if you're like, I don't know, if you're probably in your 20s, you go Google it and you'll see them. But you have to feed them, and then you have to walk them, and there were these little things, and it would beep you. Okay, she killed, I don't, I don't know how many. <laughs> so I said, you're going to have a dog when you're able to have one that will survive at least two weeks. And because I have this personality, right, that... No, I'm going to take it. It was like it was my pet. Like I became obsessed, like trying to feed it. Did you feed the pet? And it was like a virtual thing. It was, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain it, but it was, I should have gotten a picture. But it was this little thing that would be to, to feed it. Well, she made it for three weeks, so I said, I'm going to buy you a hurt me crab. You have graduated. And I painted a picture of a hermit crab, because you have to cast vision to your kids, like a hermit crab. And, and I was like, like, he wanted a chinchilla, because he, he's a pet person, and he wanted like an iguana. And I'm like, no, because I know that I'm going to take care of those pets, right? So I was like, no, 
hey, we're going to get a hermit crab because they're fun. And then they live in coconuts and, and everything, <laughs> right? And so I went and I got the best. I mean, I mean it's, it was their first pet, right? So I went and I got, they even had a, a castle. I said, his name, uh, his, uh, his hermit crab, his name was Krabby. And Alexis had Lucy, right? And, and they were fast, you know. They're not like, I thought they would be like hermits that they don't do anything. And so the kids are like, can we play with them? I'm like, I took them out, and then I couldn't find Krabby. And Isaac was crying, and I said, never again. Krabby needs a leash. <laughs> so he went back into his cage, but Lucy was very, very shy. And so I said, well, we have for a while, like a few months. And I'm like, OK, I read that they have to at some point, because God wants that every creature that God has created needs to grow. He wants us to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, right? And so it's so for anything that he has created. So uh, I went to the pet store, and they said, you know, buy new shells so they can go in and get a new home. And I was like, hey, you know, we went and we chose their, their like, homes, right? Because that's where they're going to live, you know? And then we even, you know, they even do, like, paint things and flowers and everything. And Krabby got one with with muscle, and then, the, the, and then, you know, we did everything. So Lucy will come out, and then we'll come back in. We'll come out and come back in. And I was like, and I would talk to Lucy like she would understand. I said, Lucy, I want to see your face. Lucy, please. Stick out your whatever. They don't have a paw. They have like claws, right? Like whatever you have, I don't know. Like just stick it out. Let me know that you're alive, right? Because Krabby was all over the place. So our little Isaac's, uh, Isaac's little crab went into a new shell. Then we celebrated because he got a new home, right? And he was like, yay. We saved the other one. And then Lucy never came out. And so. I thought, and then I saw like the shelving, I don't know what it's called. And I'm like, Lucy died. And I was like, oh my God. So we had a funeral. When you have kids, you have to do all those things, right? Alexis cried for, for, for Lucy. We had a Bible verse, you know, where you go to heaven. I did everything. Hey, I was meant to be a pastor, now I know. We had a celebration. It was my first funeral. And so I sat the kids in we said, uh, let's keep the shell just to remind us that we need to grow and we can never live in our comfort zone because you're still growing inside. You have everything that pertains to light that you can grow. And so, but Lucy was too afraid so she wouldn't come out. So we always need to live out of our comfort zone, right? And then Alexis said, well, where do we put, you know, the shell? I said, hey, so I won't forget it because I tend to put everything in order. I, have you met those people that organize, but they, don't, they forget where they organized everything? <laughs> and so I said, so I won't forget it. I'm going to put it in the medicine cabinet. So whenever we brush our teeth or whatever, we get to see Lucy. And, and it reminds us that we need to grow, right? True story. Like a month and a half, I open the medicine cabinet and get who's, who's moving. Lucy. I said, this was my first resurrection. <laughs> hey, you had to see it like that. I was like, what? And I'm screaming and calling the kids. Lucy is alive. I mean, mind you, she had not eaten. I, I don't know if it was a she or he, but for six weeks, six weeks. Just because we moved, I couldn't find the shell because we still have it. And then I'm like, she's alive, she's well. And I was like, yes, yeah, she gets another opportunity. And I was like telling her, like telling Lucy, speaking to Lucy, like I was talking to a person. I said, Lucy, you got another opportunity. You're going to your castle. We got your shell, go in. And I was, we were excited. And within a week, she died. <laughs> but I saw a resurrection. And I will never forget that. Well. I always thought that being a hermit meant that you just love to be alone. But you know, that's not what hermit crabs are all about. Hermit crabs live in communities. But do you see, though, do you see how they all got in line? And they all, you know what I, now that I, when I watched the video, I wanted to see it is because I killed Lucy. Because I gave her a big, a big shell. I thought, hey, you know, faith, you know what? When we think we're in faith, like, you're going to grow in Jesus' name. No, it's a process. 
everything is a process. And I was, I was speaking live, you're going to be the, tough, the toughest, you know, hurt me crab. And you know, from this shell, she was this tiny. And then my husband said, let's buy him this huge shell, right? Because he likes everything big. And I said, no, it has to be a little bit bigger. But I, I think now then I, I never saw that video. You know, mind you, this, it's years ago. So I bought the shell, but it was too big. And he says, it has to fit you perfectly. Because I, you're go, when you're growing, you're going like from faith to faith to faith, right? And what I love about it is, to me, I thought about the body of Christ. Sometimes we, we criticize, we judge people what, because they're not growing faster. All of us here tonight, we're in different seasons of our lives. But that's okay, because we're in a season, and seasons always shift, they always change, right? Your winter is never gonna stay forever, whether you feel like it's forever, no, because that's, those are seasons, and God will never leave us in a season, because we were meant to grow, we were meant to constantly be in transition, but to a better place, to a bigger place. And before I go on to my first scripture, because I'm gonna tell you how to break the comfort zone. And believe me, I had to break my comfort zone. And at the beginning, I thought, you know what, I'm good because I, you know, I, I, I continue to exchange my little shell, my little shell. But sometimes it says, and I read this, sometimes they die because you actually are grown within inside, but you don't, you, you are so afraid to go into a new shell that that's why you literally are killing yourself and God doesn't want to get God when God is going to ask you to go into a new level into a new dimension into a new gro growth spirit he's never ever going to do something that it's going to hurt you that it's going to kill you that's going to destroy you that's going to rot from you that is the devil because Jesus came to give us life and have it more abundantly but God told me to say something before I start my message and he and I'm just going to say it are you giving permission? It's not part of my message. But the Lord told me that we have started 2019. And many of us sitting here, being in this facility, in this church, many of us find yourself, although you have entered a new year, you have, God has given you promise, you even did um, the vision board, and many of you feel hopeless. There's many of you that if you are going to open up your heart and be vulnerable just like that hermit crab, because in order to go and get a new house, you have to chance it that the, while you're getting out of the new comfort zone and going to go into new, this new, new one, no one's going to take it. And the good news with us is that no one can take the place and the position that God has given you. The enemy can try because he's a bully. You saw the other hermit crab, right? Like he wasn't even in line. He's like, I'm going in. But I love the, but I love the attitude of the other little hermit crab. Like, praise God, they're not like church people, right? It would have been a fight there. Like, yeah, that's what I was in line. I was the last one. I was in line. I waited, and then you come in, and now you're growing faster than me. That that was supposed to be my house. You you know how it is, right? Life, life, everywhere. But. What God told me is to say and to tell you, and I'm speaking also to myself, and he said, tell them the hope is what they have. And I grabbed this scripture right before we started, and I want you to write it down because it's Ephesians 1.8. And he says this, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. He wants you the eyes of your heart. He didn't say, I want your eyes, your, your, your physical eyes, your natural eyes. I want them to, to see beyond. Or he says, I want your eyes, the eyes of your heart to be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. He wants you to know the hope of his glory. And as I wrote it today, one of the things that I was studying, um, and I've been studying a lot, it's about hope. Because I believe that we live in a, in a world that is hopeless. Uh, there is churches, and we, you and I are the church, that many times we find ourselves hopeless. I know that I've been hopeless many times in my life. I know that I've been hopeless in many seasons of my life. 
And you are going to say, like, but how is it that you can be hopeless when you have Jesus, when the hope of glory lives inside of us? So I decided to, to do a study. And I said, well, Lord, okay, so to what is, I know that you are my hope, because hope it has a name, right? But as I was studying, because I love to study all about the mind and everything, and Dr. Karen Laleef, and she's a neuroscientist and everything. And so, in another person, I forget, I think her name is Brené Brown, and she said that hope is actually not an emotion. Did you know that? Who knew that hope is not an emotion? Okay, none of us, right? I mean, I was like, what? It says that emotions played a part, a minimum part of our hope. But it says that hope is a cognitive behavior, which means it's in the brain. It means we are able to learn hope. And so how do I learn hope? You know, we think a lot, a lot, a lot about hope. I talk to myself a lot about hope, but I'm waiting. Many times I'm just waiting for that feeling. I'm waiting for, you know, I, I, I want to feel the hope. I want to feel the bubble. I want to feel ah, like I, I am in a new year. And if you're waiting to feel, if God is calling you to do something bigger this year, if God is asking you to release some things that you need to release, if God is asking you to believe for something greater, there's something that you think is even stupid because it's too big, it's too, it, it's, it's the, the size of the dream that God has given you, it seems impossible. And I tell you why, because you have lost your hope. Because you're waiting, you're waiting like, mm, is it going to happen? I don't feel it. I know that God told me. So I'm here to tell you that you need to know that this year you should declare it. And I'm declaring that this church, we're going to learn how to hope. And how do you learn how to hope? You exercise hope. How do you learn to be brave? How do I come out from my comfort zone so from this side to this side? You know, I tell you how you come out. You come out believing that it is God's word that he has called you, that God spoke to you when you were praying, when you were fasting. We're about to go on a 10-day fast. And believe me, I believe that God is going to speak a lot of things into our hearts. I believe that this year, is, I, as I was praying, I believe that this year there's going to be a year that a lot of our bandages are going to be removed. What do I mean by that? I mean that we have been living. He resurrected us, just like Lucy was, I mean, Lucy, the hermit crab, was, was alive. I just didn't know it. But many times we are alive, we are alive in Christ, but there's nothing. There's nothing. It's like you don't even exist, you don't even see, you're just going through the motions. And I believe with all of my heart that God doesn't want you to go through the motions. God doesn't want you to go through again another 2018, again trying to, trying to pump yourself, trying to encourage yourself. And when I mean encourage yourself, like within your own strength, God wants you to believe that he is who he is, that he's the great I am, and whatever you need in this life, in this year, you will accomplish it. But that needs to be, you need to be like a bulldog to be able to say that. You need to be so, so secured in who God is and what he told you to do, what he called you to be and who he is this year so you can walk in the promises of God. I know that this year, and I, I say it every year, but I told the Lord, you know, I'm tired every year saying, you know, I want to see... I want to see uh, marriages being restored. I want to see children coming back to their homes. I want to see kids being delivered from, from drugs. I, I, I want to see the impossible. Whatever the world says, or even our own self says, this is never going to happen. I want to see it. But in order for me to see it, then I have to, I have to allow God to enlighten my heart so I can see that I, I, I will never lose hope. I think it was Angela that says, even in our darkest moments, we are not afraid of the dark because he is with us. But how many times have you been in a dark place and you didn't see a light? I mean, let's be honest, right? No, but the, the word of God says that, no, there, he is our light, he is our hope, and, and we go back. But see, it's only here. 
and I believe that it's time for us to transfer everything that we know, everything that we know, and it's, it's, it, it, is, it is the word of God, it's the logos of God, but now it's time to transfer into our heart and let the heart of God allow you to see beyond your moment. Because a lifetime is full of moments. Sometimes we're waiting for something huge to happen. And we don't even enjoy the moment. We don't even enjoy the present because you're waiting for the big bang, but for the big boom, the shabam, or whatever you want to call it. And we wait and we wait, and every day you wake up and you're still in the same shell that you've been for a long time. And believe me, when you live in a shell, you stink. <laughs> you should buy a hermit crab. And they're crappy because they, they smell. You have to clean them constantly because they're afraid of oh, come, coming out. And I believe that God, you know, I've always talked about the comfort zone. And for many years, I believe that, you know what, I was, you know, like sometimes, you know when you're at a mountaintop? Have you ever been at a mountaintop? You're only there for a minute, right? Because you can't breathe for too long. But I remember just like, feeling like, wow, what else? What else, Lord? What else are you going to give me? And I'm going to tell you that every promise of God that he has given you always comes with work. Always. Every promise of God it will always come. The enemy is the one who comes to tempt us and tell us, you know what? Did God really promise that? He, he started since the beginning with Adam and Eve. Did, he, did God really tell you that? Like, if you eat that fruit, are you sure? Are you sure that that's what he said? And that's where he comes. He comes to instigate you. He comes to take the word. He wants your word that has been given to you. But the Bible says in Revelations that we overcome by the blood of the land and by the word of our testimony. But we need to talk it. Be like a crazy person. Talk to yourself. This year I'm talking to myself more than ever, which is scary. The other day, I was, uh, um, I, I love to tell a story, but I was, during our vacation, I went to sit, 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 sit down at a little gazebo, and I have my, my drone, and I was like, I looked around, like, because you want, you know, you don't want to look like you're crazy, right? And since it was vacation, so like, I'm going to be on my PJs, there's no makeup, there's no one knows me here, right? I was going to be, oh, there's a pastor that looks like a homeless. No, no one. Because <laughs> that's that way I felt, like, I mean, I was... Well, okay, I don't want to know it. But I, I was sitting, and I looked around, and I did my, my perimeter. I like, choo, 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 choo. okay, is this, if this is safe, I'm going to talk to myself. So I opened my little, what I wrote for, for the beginning of the year. And, and I said, Virginia, you're going to exercise. And I'm going to talk about exercising. You're going to exercise kindness. This year, you're going to brave your life forward because may, being brave to you might not be what it looks like for me. Because for me, being brave might, see, might be saying no. Because a lot of people, have you ever met those people that are yes people? Like, yes, yes, and inside you hate it that they're asking you. Right? They're asking, can you help us? And you're like, inside, you're like, you're twitching and already like inside, and you, you can hear every, every bone cracking. But then you put a smile and you say, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I do it, praise Jesus, I will do it, sister. <laughs> How many times have you done that? I have. Not recently, but I have. <laughs> because it has taken me years to be able to be, to be okay with me because being brave, being kind, Learning how to exercise the fruit of the spirit means that I have self-control. I can say no. No one, and we worry because then I'm going to worry like, but if she says no, then they're going to think that I'm not a good pastor. If, they, if, 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 if I say no, they're going to think all oh, these things that come. No one is saying that. It's me. Right? So I'm living to please who? And at the end of the day, I could be like really pissed off. We can say pissed off in this church. Okay, you release. You could be really mad, right? Like, you're like, Ugh! I hate it. People just ask me all these things. They're like, are they making you? Are they bringing a gun to your head or to your side? Hey, can you, can you, can you serve in, uh, as an usher? Okay. No one is making you. 
No one is making you. We are making our lives miserable because we love our comfort zone. And to some other people, it's the opposite. You need to learn how to be kind. You're like, I have no problem with that. If I don't like it, I will tell it how it is. Tell it like it is. <laughs> I can sing because I know how. Don't be afraid. I forgot the second lyric. Let your conscience be your guide. But, but there is people that they feel that they're very brave. Oh, yeah, I'm so truthful. They just want to slap them. I just tell the truth as it is. Really, brother? Shut up. <laughs> you want to be like Jesus? John says, and I don't know why, but you go to John 1 and you can read the whole thing. John 1, I think, is verse 8 that I'm giving you homework. But it says that Jesus is full of grace and full of truth. It doesn't say 50%. Hey, I'm going to give you 50% and 50% here. No, 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 no. He's completely 100, and he wants us to be whole this year. So there's people that you can work on this year. It's like, you know what? I'm going to restrain my tongue. I'm going to keep it because it's so easy for me just to tell the truth. And maybe it is the truth, but there is no grace in your mouth. So being vulnerable, being brave, means you do the opposite. For me, it would be work on just telling them the truth. Just choose the truth and find a lot of grace and mesh it together. But make sure that if I'm just going to say the truth, I have to make sure that I'm going to give my 100% grace. And that's what God wants from us. That we need to go like, it's time to move from the little shell to another shell. Whatever is your comfort, move it little by little. God is not asking us to, you know, when we think about everything that we read about God and you read about uh, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, it talks about always like the fruit of the Spirit is not something that you, voila, you speak it and you water it one day and wow, you have, you're so like fruitful now. No, it's a lifestyle. It's a garden that is inside. There's a, there's, there has to be this garden inside, and we have the fruit of the Spirit, and we water every day, and we tend it every day. It's not a chia pet that he's asking us to do. Chia, 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 you know? Like, why am I not growing? Because you just gave your life to Jesus. Why am I not praying like they're praying? Why are they seeing more miracles than me? You, you don't even know if they're seeing miracles. Why is their family better than mine? Why, why is their marriage better than mine? And we compare ourselves, and, and then we see the other shell, and I want the other shell. It's bigger, but uh, I don't want to come out. I don't want to be vulnerable. Do you know that people hate vulnerability? What does this mean? It's be genuine, be you. I believe that this year God wants to be the real you, but the real you, not the real you in Jesus Christ. The real you that we can win, the lost souls outside that they're hopeless, and we can tell them when someone is hopeless, I can say, you know what, it's okay if you feel hopeless today because guess what? God wired us. So in our brain, there is a wire. God wired us for love. God wired us to learn everything. That's why you go back to the word where it says in Romans 12, 2, this is, this is to be transformed by what? This says do not be conformed by the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But the renewing of our mind. Oh, no, I just want hope. Can somebody pray for me for hope? Sister, you're going to stay there forever. Because hope is what you already have. So we're asking God for something that it's already in you. You have all these tools. This is how I picture myself really fit, right? Because I can picture whatever I want. You picture yourself like whatever. But I picture myself like fit, you know, and with the tool belt and then everything is really nice and I'm gonna exercise and I'm gonna work and my whole life I'm gonna be under construction my whole life I'm gonna be under under God's guidance and my whole life I'm not gonna lose hope because I'm training my mind I'm gonna exercise my mind I'm going to practice what the Lord says to do because the word of the Lord needs to be worked 
faith without works is dead. And sometimes we think, I, you're in faith. Sometimes I have thought that I was in faith. But I'm, if I'm just saying things, it's, and there is no, no essence, there is no nothing, there is no... We're not even praying. We're not even, we just want God. We just feel that we're so entitled. God said this year, there were prophets that said that this is the year that is going to be glorious. Therefore, it is going to be glorious, but you're still not going to look for a job because you're expecting God to bring the job to you. God told me that this year my marriage is going to be awesome, but you're still screaming at each other. But we're covered by the blood of Jesus, Right? God told me that he's going to restore my kids, but you won't even talk to your kids and you won't even see them beyond their moment. God told me that I was going to get a new business, that he's going to give me an incredible idea, a creative, innovative idea. He's giving me a business, but yet you're waiting. I don't know what to do. What do I do? Then go study. Then go find out and find out people. If you want a better marriage, go find out people that are doing. We have classes here. We have everything here. You go find out. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you not kill each other? You practice, right? You, you practice everything. Hey, I have self-control. You're going to tame this tongue. You're going to smile. Hmm? And you smile when your husband comes home. He didn't do that to-do list, the honey to-do, right? He wasn't meant to do that. And then we get all fit up and, and, and so caught up with all the little things, that, that's the little things, the little things are the things that spoil, it spoil the foxes. That's what the, the Bible says. But it's in those little things that you create a lot, a lot of fruit of the Spirit. Can you imagine this year we decide to love our families that have talked about us? Can you imagine this year we decide to, hey, make a phone call and or send a card to one of your friends that has been there at, in your darkest moments? Can you imagine if this year we just say, we're, gonna, we're just going to exercise who we are in Jesus Christ. I'm going to send, and this is one of my goals, I'm going to send a card to each person that has made an impact in my life. If you're a loner, don't be a loner. You know, I get at least two to three people. Surround yourself with them. Grow. Stop being afraid that they're, they're going to betray you. They're going to disappoint you. They're going to talk about you. And let me tell you, it might happen. But that's being brave in Jesus. That's hoping in Jesus. That's being the light of the world. We want a different 2019. Let's win the city. I want to win my family. And I wrote it down, I want to win my family. And there's a lot of them. And you know, you have those, we're going to edit this part. We have those people that, dang it, I'm in my 40s and they have never changed. They're older than me and they talk about the same thing and they live the same. And many times I just want to pray with them, but I want God to send an angel. Don't use me, Lord, you send an angel. If you need to use an ask, they send them. A donkey, you know, the Bible says ask. If you, if you read it in the King James, don't look at me like that. Like, but what? What are you talking about? It's the right word. Okay? Stop asking for asses to come and talk to your family. You be the one. You be the ass. No, you're just kidding. <laughs> this is biblical, people. I do not want... Do talk to me after. It is biblical. God used a donkey once. And read it in the King James. He said, I needed to use because the prophet was being a donkey. So he was like, okay, I need to use an ass. So, <laughs> Holy Spirit, come back. You see? Uh, a lot of joy but what I'm saying to you I was like I'm praying and I wrote every name of my family that I want them to come to the Lord because if I believe that Jesus is really real if I believe that Jesus really lo does love me if I believe that there's nothing impossible for him if I believe that he can he is bigger than anything that he can cure cancer if I, I believe that he, he can cure trauma I come from a lot of trauma and if he's higher than that bigger than that then what am I waiting for and but yet they're hurting. 
But they, see, I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to be in the conflict. I don't want to be the friendly fire in between. Like, oh, shoot me. And that's why I told the Lord, what do you want me to do for them to crucify me? You know how you are when you feel like you're so spiritual. Crucify me, Lord. Use me as your vessel as they poke me. He's like, excuse me, I already did that for you 2,000 years ago. I'm not asking you to die. I'm asking you to live and give the life that I have given to them. I'm asking you to extend the grace that I gave you when I found you and you were so dirty and you were so lost and you hated me and yet I loved you and I still loved you. And after your 22 years, I know your life from beginning to end, and you know your, your mess, you know your darkest moments, you know your thoughts that were not pleasing to me. I knew it all. I chose you then, and I was believing to, I, I was believing in you then as I believed to you about you now. This is how long. You can pray for God to send missionaries. That's sad if we have to ask for missionaries to go and reach our families. Like, oh, are you killing me softly? Killing me softly. <laughs> if you ever have a par party of karaoke, invite me. Okay, I'm gonna give you a, a scripture because you're like, oh my gosh, you didn't. Uh, Philippians 4:13 says, "I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me." Right? This is this is the scripture for this year. It is that I can, I will, at the end. But it's not. It's not things that you want to choose. I, I'll choose to. I can. I, I can do. I can eat food. That I can do. I can exercise. I can. I will at the end. Woo -woo, at the end of the year, I'm going to look good. I can't work in my finances. I can. I will at the end. But would you forgive that person? I cannot. I won't. The end. <laughs> can you release all this? Well, whatever. God, to, we choose. No, this is the year of not choosing. You choose the word of God. From beginning to end John 15 5 says 15 verse 5 says I am the vine you are my, the branches he who abides in me and I'm in him bears much fruit and without me you can do nothing this is a year of growth I'm gonna read what I wrote um, we're always on transit that's why you need to know that you have you ever been stuck in a place I've been stuck in a place And it's horrible to be stuck in a place. I don't know what your place is that you're stuck, but I'm gonna tell you that's not the will of God. Because God is life. He said, let there be life, light and light still going. His word never stops. So your life will always be on transit, on the move, in transition to good things, to better things, to greater things. This swap, this transition can be challenging. There's nothing wrong with being a hermit crab, okay? If you feel like I'm a hermit, I always said, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, have a, I have a hermit personality. Well, you saw all those, they live in communities, and that's why they die when we buy hermit crab. So don't buy a hermit crab now that I watched that video. But I'm going to buy one, but I'm going to buy many. Okay. There's nothing wrong with being a hermit crab as long as you are well aware when growth and change needs to happen. Do you know that there's nothing wrong with like, okay, go at your pace. You know, God is not a God that is with the ruler there or something like with the whip and or move. Like, no, we're not cattle. And he won't push you. We're not donkeys. We are sheep. And the sheep listen, we listen to the voice of our shepherd. When he says move, we move. We even sing a song, go to the right, to the left, whatever. But when he tells us to go to the right, no, I want to go to the left. No, we are the sheep of his pasture and we do what he tells us to do. And whenever you're in transition, you are going to encounter a lot of conflict and let me tell you that conflict there's nothing wrong with conflict god said be peacemakers you know that peacemakers not just to walk around with the flag no it means that you need to use your mouth and you need to use the skills that god has given you and how to speak and how to be kind and how to tell the truth 
He didn't ask us to be uh, peacekeepers because when we try to keep the peace, it's when we mess up everything because we're doing it on our own. I'm just not going to say nothing. Have you ever, have, I have used to do this a lot. Like I would go to God and I was like, Lord, I'm going to tell you everything to you, right? So I will go and, and you're actually gossiping about people because you don't tell no one so you feel great, right? You, you, I'm not talking to nobody, nobody except God, Lord. I'm just coming before you and I'm asking you to change so and so and change so and so. You know what they have. This is their problem. This is their problem. This is their problem. Blah, blah, blah. Because I want to keep my peace. I want to keep my comfort. You know how hard it was when I had to come and be a pastor? And I was like, dang it, why, Lord? Why me? I should have been just a lady that sits in the back or cleans or whatever because I hated when I needed to call someone out and I needed to and I needed to correct them because no one likes to be corrected we all like to be encouraged but don't tell me you like to be corrected because if you do you kind of lying oh I love to be corrected I don't I'm not gonna lie to you too I still don't but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean I don't receive correction because I'm learning and I'm growing and I want to be like Jesus. So when people correct me, I know when people are correcting me out of love because they already have a solution. I'm going to tell you and I have a lot of good friends here in the church that have corrected me. Just maybe I said something idiotic. Maybe like donkey. No. Other things. But I trust them. You know that? And you know that for me to trust, I had to break the shell to be able to go into trusting people. Okay, oh Lord, if I'm gonna be a child of God, a follower of Jesus Christ, I need to get out of this armor and I need to go into this one. And while I'm going into this one, because when you're in transition, it's ugly. You, you don't know if you wanna go back or you wanna go here. So you're vulnerable, people can see you. And then when I came to, do, to uh, start church, I felt like I lived and I still feel like I live in a fishbowl. Everybody sees your crap. I also have killed fish because of that. Because I wanted to clean their home and I used Dawn. So when my husband came back, all the fishes were dead. But their house was clean. <laughs> You're learning a lot. Just take it home and ask God, Lord, what were you trying to tell me when she was saying the story? All right? Just see, I'm giving you insight. What I'm doing is that you're exercising. How do I hear God when she says something? <laughs> In other words, if you don't like mess, don't have any pets. Don't clean your fish bowl with Dawn or with palm olive. No, no, that will kill your fish. You can sell the fish tank later. But I learned. Okay, so I'm going to close with this. This is a series. I, it's a lot. And I have a lot of good stuff. But let me tell you one more thing. When we are in transition, when we're going from one place to another, when we're swapping, I want you to know that it's not a microwave process. Many of you are believing for family members. I know that many of you are believing for family members. Some of you have been believing for your children. Um, that they had been hooked on drugs for many years. And I believe that you're at the point that you already gave up. Because you thought, like, if it's God and He's powerful, why is this not happening? Because God is not a microwave, and He doesn't do it when we think we should do it. It's in His timing. He is eternal. We have a timeline. He doesn't have a timeline. So His time is perfect. But I'm going to tell you that you will see your family come to Jesus. If you're believing for healing in your body, I believe that God is going to heal you. If you have been diagnosed with any disease that it's incurable, maybe cancer, I don't know, I want you to stand up because I want to pray for you. Anything that the Lord told you, like the doctor said, you know, this is what you have and we don't see, you know, you know of a person because I believe that God wants to heal you. If you're here and who cares who's looking, forget it. This is the time that you're going to go from this shell to another shell. We're just going to get in line, right? Like the little hermits. Nobody knows where you are. And so that's why I'm making multiple calls. But if you're here and maybe your marriage is, is at the brink of divorce, maybe your family is at the brink of divorce, 
your entire family, your children, they're lost. Maybe you lost everything. You had a business and now you, you find yourself and you don't even have finances. I don't know where you're in life, but I'm here to tell you that God wants to make do a miracle in your life because he's a miracle maker, but he wants you to believe it now because the year just started. So if that's you, I just want you to stand up and I'm going to pray for you. You stand up. And you know when you stand up? Be brave. You know, it takes, it takes a lot of guts to stand up and say I gotta, and say this is what I need I'm, I'm not who you think I am I, I don't have what you think I have God already knows everything and we are supposed to we win by sharing and asking other people to help us I'm not saying go tell the entire world but I know that we're two or three are gathered together it he is here and he wants to do his work because he it, that's his desire it's not even your desire so if you're not standing up and you see people that are standing up I want you to lay hands whoever is next to you just lay hands and believe with me and agree with me because if you're not standing that means you're doing so good your faith is so up and your hope is is really strong so lay hands on them lay hands on them lay hands on them okay and I'm gonna ask you also if we're gonna be doing a fasting and prayer there's some things that can only be broken by fasting and prayer many times we are not even praying we're not even fasting we're just hoping that something will come from the sky and just voila change it no I'm asking you to come and join us, whether it's a one-day uh, uh, fast that you do, two days fast, it doesn't matter. God is not counting the days. God is counting on your heart and that you're believing that He is able, that He is the great I am, and He is what you need and who you need. So, Father, I just thank you for every person standing up, and I thank you that they're brave and that you're well pleased to see them up because they are your children, and we don't beg we're, we're not beggars. And God will tell you tonight, you are not a beggar. You are not a beggar. You are not a beggar. What I promise I will do for you, you will see it. The Lord says, do not lose hope. And if you don't feel like you have hope today, you learn today that hope is learned. It's a, a, a way of thinking. So today you're going to have a new thought. And you're going to say, you know, God, thank you. Thank you that I'm able to hope because you are my hope. I'm able to love because you are my love. I'm able to forgive because you forgave me first. I'm able to believe that I'm whole and I'm healed because you took every sickness, every disease on that cross. You're able to restore my family, my life, or whatever you lost. He's able to restore it because he is God. He left you with the great inheritance. And you are able to do all things. It doesn't say some things. You are able to do all things because he is your strength. You are not relying on your strength. And if you're thinking that, no, because I'm weak, I don't have this and I don't have that. You know what? That's a lie. You erase it and you say, no, I have it because I have Jesus. So, Father, I thank you, Father, and I plead the blood of Jesus of every person that's standing up in what they believe in you for, Father, because you know. And I declare that we will hear, Father, by the end of this month, I declare that we will hear great reports. We will hear great testimonies because that's who you are, and we're placing a demand on your word, not on ourselves, but on your word. So I thank you, Father God. I thank you that we will hear of restoration, we will hear of healing, we will he he uh, hear of freedom, and we will celebrate with them. And Father, I thank you they're going to shout from the mountaintop what you have done in their lives. And without shame, without condemnation, because you are their Savior and you are their God and you're a good God and you have not changed your mind about them. This is the beginning of a new season. And I thank you they will see this season with great joy, with a new pers 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 uh, perspective, with the eyes of Jesus. So we believe it, we agree, we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.